Okay, let's continue with direct substitution. So, if you notice that it is quite easy to do direct substitution, you're right. However, just like what I've told you in the previous video, it has its limitations. If you will substitute here, you'll get 2 minus 3 and the result is negative 1. This is the same as the value that we got when we solved this using tables and graphs. And that's very easy, right? But what if? What if we solved this one? This is item number one of your LAS. And if you would check your LAS, which was submitted, supposedly submitted last week, you will be able to get the value 2 here using tables and graphs. But what will happen? What will happen if you do direct substitution? What happens if we substitute 3 here? Try it, try it, try it. Well, let's try it together. 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 3 all over 3 minus 3. So this is 0 over 0. Dun, 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 dun. Unlike your tables and graphs, which yielded 2 as the limit, what we got here is 0. This is the limitation of direct substitution that requires us to do the simplification or simply factoring. So when we have these types of limits, these are what we call indeterminate limits. Indeterminate limits is different from an undefined function. When you are evaluating a function and you get zero as the denominator, that's called an undefined function. But when you're evaluating a limit and you got zero, zero, then this is an indeterminate limit. What is the difference? Let's see. Based on the definitions that we've had, when we say indeterminate, Miriam Webbs, Miriam, sorry, Miriam Webster says that indeterminate means not being able to be stated or described in an exact way. It's vague. In calculus, it is an undefined function, but, but, but it's very different from, um, uh, the mathematical concept behind. So technically, it looks like an undefined function, whereas undefined functions are functions whose denominators are zero. But then again, when we talk about limits, it's indeterminate. When we talk about functions, it's undefined. Because when you try to zoom into the graph of the limit here, you will see na it fluctuates at the point where it becomes undefined. So my point here is when we're talking about limits, you're just approaching x. At, in this case, we're just approaching 3. Unlike if you're evaluating the function in itself. Kapag kasi nag-evaluate ka ng function, tinatry mong kunin yung value ng function sa point 3, sa mismong point 3. Whereas, kapag kinukuha mo lang yung limit ng function habang papunta sa 3, you're just getting the approximate value. You're not getting the value at 3 itself. Wala kang pinupunto na, oh, sa point 3, ano yung value niya. Yun na ang difference nilang dalawa. Kapag kasi pinag-uusapan natin limit, you're just getting closer and closer to 3. So, think of the numbers 2.9, 2.999, 2.9999. But it never gets to 3. Unlike the function na nagiging undefined. Kapag dun sa function, undefined siya kasi hindi mo determine yung point ng function mo at 3. Whereas when you're just getting the limit, you're just getting closer and closer to 3, which becomes just an approximation. Therefore, may value tayong makukuha. Kasi kapag limit ang sinusolve natin, it's just an approximation. Kapag undefined, pinipinpoint mo, nasa 3 talaga. Okay? Hindi pa ako galit. Nagpapaliwanag lang. So, how will we solve the limit of this one? Let's do this together. Okay? So, let's do it. Again, first, let's check. Is this indeterminate? That's always your first step, ah. Kasi kanina, ay, sorry, for the previous video, diba, we were able to look for um, the limit of a fraction, of a complex fraction, and then we were able to arrive at 6 over 19, right? The previous function. Eh, fraction din naman yun, pero hindi siya nag-indeterminate. Kaya kailangan mo munang i-check. So, step one, we check. Check if it's indeterminate. So, substitute the value of 3 here. We'll get 
3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 3 all over 3 minus 3, which is 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate limit. All right, so this is an indeterminate limit. Next, what we do is to simplify or to factor out. Simplify or you factor out. So in your simplifying limits, most often than not, and yeah, most of the time, the denominator, x minus 3, is already one of the factors, x minus 3. Therefore, you're just identifying one more factor. And how do you do that? You divide the last term or the constant by the constant of the binomial. So you have positive 3 divided by negative 3. What will you get? Yep, you'll get negative 1. So x minus 1 here. How will you check if you got the correct functions? Or if correct factors? Well, multiply. <laughs> negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 3. Correct. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. Correct pa din. Now, why is factoring effective? Because it removes the value that makes the function 0. Let me just show you that. You don't have to do this step. I would just like to illustrate that for you. Say we are getting the limit of the function, of this factored function as x approaches 3. If I substitute it here, you will see na. Sorry, let's use a blue ink. You don't have to do this. Huh? I just want you to see why it's correct. 3 minus 3. And this is 3 minus 1 all over 3 minus 3. Itong factors na to, itong factors na to, yung nagpapa 0 sa, mong, sa mismong function mo. Kasi 3 minus 3, mag 0 yan. 0 yan. So, kapag nag-factor out ka, natatanggal to. Natatanggal yung nagkukos ng 0 sa kanya. So, we remove that and we will be able to obtain a value. Now, let's rewrite our simplified function. You'll have the limit of the quantity of x minus 1 as x approaches 3. Now, we will be able to substitute 3 minus 1 and you'll get 2. And check your papers. 2 is the, fog, uh, is the limit that we were able to obtain a while ago or previously in your tables and graphs. And that's how we do um, direct substitution and how we solve indeterminate limits. Yeah. Again, check whether it's indeterminate. Second, you factor out. With that, peace out. Bye.